Good morning, Cornerstone Church. I'm Pastor Joseph. I'm the children's pastor here. Um, I hope that you all had a great Christmas. I know me and my family, we had a phenomenal Christmas. And if you're anything like me, you love children. And so I have a nephew now that is four years old. So my favorite part about Christmas is getting to watch him open his gifts and to see the excitement and the smile come across his face. It truly just warms my heart. And so this morning, I wanted to share a little story and a quick little video with you guys just to show you um, his cuteness. But two weeks ago, I went into my mom's house and my nephew was there. And so he runs up to me and he says, Uncle Joe. And I was like, what's up, man? And he said, come with me. And he grabs my hand and pulls me to the Christmas tree where my mom had already put out a bunch of gifts. And so he starts to tell me, he points at this one gift in the back corner, and he says, Uncle Joe, that's your gift, and the rest of these are mine. <laughs> and I said, I said, buddy, I don't think it works like that, man. I said, for, for me, I'm the oldest, I'm the, I'm the only boy in the family. I said, so all these gifts are mine. And he said, no, Uncle Joe, I'm the Grinch stole Christmas. You get that gift, and the rest are mine. And so... Being a children's pastor, you know that kids are going to continue their funniness. So I pulled out my phone and I just happened to catch this on video. So, yeah, that's just a quick little video of him, but he truly warms my heart. And so I just hope that you guys had a great Christmas and had a good time uh, spending that quality time with your families. Um, like Corey said, Pastor Jerry and his family are out this morning, so he asked me to speak. So I just want to say it is an honor to be able to speak to each and every one of you today. Um, Pastor asked me to speak, and I just want to say it is Truly a blessing to have Pastor Jerry in your life, and everybody needs somebody like him. Somebody that's going to encourage you and truly wants to see you reach your potential, see you reach your highest level. And so I just want to say thank you to Pastor Jerry for believing in me and giving me the opportunity to share what God's put on my heart with all of you today. Um, I don't have two or three points like Pastor Jerry would have. I have one main point. So we might get out early. We might not. We don't know. But, but I know that, that God has a plan this morning, and if you just buy in, I know that he has something for you and wants to use me to deliver that message to you. And so we're going to be in Matthew 23, 25 through 26, but I've titled this message, Don't Store It in the Closet. Don't Store It in the Closet. And so Matthew 23, 25 through 26, I'm reading out of the NIV, 25 says, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. 26, blind Pharisees. First, clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Dear Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning just to ask you to be with us, to, to let us put our distractions to the side this morning, to be able to hear what you have for us to open our hearts and our, our ears and our minds to be able to take in what you want us to have, Lord. So we thank you this morning, we praise you, and we give you all the honor and glory. Amen. So I want to take the next few moments to talk about cleaning our hearts and our soul from the inside out, not from the outside in. Cleaning our hearts and our soul is like cleaning our house or our bedroom. We, we get rid of things, we store things in closets, we wipe things down, we sweep, we mop, and the house begins to shine again. It, it looks like we've accomplished something, and, and it feels like we've accomplished something, but when we start on the outside of the house, we never fully feel accomplished or relieved. We never feel like we have that, that shine to us, because we know what the inside still looks like. We know what's going on in the inside See, when we clean our house or our rooms, we, we tend to hold on to old things, things that's just in the way, things that's taking up space. And, and we're like this because as young children, we, we practice storing things into our closets. Our, our moms or our parents in general would tell us to clean our room and we can go to a friend's house, clean our room and we can have a friend come over, clean your room and, and you can have extra video game time 
And as children, we want these things to happen as fast as possible. So we go to our rooms, we gather all of our stuff off the floor, our dressers, our bed, and we just shove it into the closet. But see, the problem with this practice is that we make it a habit and we carry it into our adult lives, inventing a closet in our hearts for all of the junk that, that we're dealing with or we're carrying around with us. We also could think about a hoarder. Hoarders collect junk over years and years and years, and this stuff becomes um, a crippling to them, and, and it's just in the way and taking up space. And eventually somebody will come in and they'll tell them, hey, you need to get rid of this stuff. You need to move this stuff out. And so they'll agree to it. But then when the movers, they come in and they begin to move things around and move things out and get rid of things, the, the hoarder is so attached to all of the things that they have collected to this point that they tell the, the movers, no, 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 actually, don't get rid of that. Just store that in the closet. So many of us today have not cleaned out our hearts and our soul. We clean out the outer appearance. We clean what people can see. We put on this, this smile for people. But on the inside, we're full of pain, anger, lust, emotional baggage. And instead of addressing these hardships of our life and cleaning them out, we just push them to the back thinking that they'll fix themselves. We try to stay distant. We try to um, stay busy and distract ourselves from these areas of our life because we don't want to deal with them or we think that they'll vanish over time. See, as, as humans, we push our anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, hate, and pains of our life to the back and we store them in the closet and it's never a good idea to store things in our closets because it's like cleaning your your house or your room when you store things in the closet you eventually have to reopen that closet and all that stuff is going to fall out and so when we don't clean our hearts and our soul the correct way and we just store them in the closet Eventually, we have to reopen that closet and all that stuff's going to fall out. But now we have to deal with the, the physical effects, the emotional issues or the relationship problems that come with storing everything into the closet. See, most of us do this and we try to handle the cleanup the way we know how. And that's by storing everything into the closet, making the outside look good, making people assume that we have it all together. And when we do this, at some point, we hit a wall. We hit a dark place in our life because we're trying to do the cleanup alone. It's hard to shine the way God's purposed us to shine if our closet's full of darkness. But can I tell you this morning, church, we don't have to do it alone. We, we have a God that, that wants to deliver us. We have a God that gives us a special gift called the Holy Spirit. We should always call on God first, letting him give us the Holy Spirit to clean out our hearts and renew our souls. Because the cleanup must start on the inside and work its way to the outside, but it's hard to do that without the help of the Holy Spirit. See, these areas of our life begin to creep out of our closet when we're at our highest point or when we feel like God's working or he's moving. Because that's how the enemy works. He, he's here to still kill and destroy and if it's in the closet, then the enemy's still in control and can defeat you. When we, when we, we will never fully be clean until we're willing to, to clean house and give everything over to God, allowing the Holy Spirit to move through us like a vacuum cleaner, removing these areas from our closets. Then we get to experience what it's like to shine. Only then we get to experience the accomplishment and freedom. Only then we can experience peace, joy, love, uh, salvation, and acceptance. See, I'm here today to tell someone that you don't, you don't have to clean the closet out alone. You don't have to store another burden into your closet. We have a God that loves you and wants to make you clean again. All you have to do is give it over to him today and, and allow the Holy Spirit to begin cleaning out your heart and renewing your soul. See, we wonder why we have so many relationship problems and emotional issues or, or even letting our childhood memories go. And the reason we have these problems is because we'd rather store them in the closet than giving them over to God. We're so attached to the things that we're dealing with and going through that we'd rather keep it in the closet than allowing God to get rid of it forever. When we store something in the closet, we never fully get rid of that item or that memory. We don't use it and it's stored away. 
and, and we think we forgot about it for a period of time. But then when we reopen that closet or we're in conversation with somebody and they bring something up that they have, it, it clicks with us and we're like, oh yeah, I have that too or, or I deal with that. But see, I thought you got rid of that. I thought you gave that to God a long time ago. See, it's dangerous to stuff lust, pain, bitterness, regret, and relationships into your closet because we think we got rid of them, but in reality, we just made the enemy that much stronger. So when we think the, the house or our room is clean, somebody or something is brought back to our attention, and the enemy has a great way of turning the doorknob just enough to let these things begin to creep out of your closets. What we learn is that we will always deal with hate, bitterness, greed, and pains in our life, but the only way to get rid of these areas is not by shutting them in the closet, but it's by throwing it into God's hands, letting God give the Holy Spirit to you to clean out your closets and remove the burdens that you have stored away. Because I can promise you this, once you give it over to God, God's never going to hand it back to you. He, he's never going to allow it to creep out of your closet. You're going to get to experience what it's truly like to have a clean heart and a, and a renewed soul. When we, when we hand it over to God and we pray for God to clean our hearts, he will give us a clean heart and soul pleasing to him. But can I tell you this morning, church, it starts with you. You have to be willing to cry out to God. You have to be willing to to allow yourself to step back and let the Holy Spirit step in. Today you have that opportunity to, to just cry out to God and, and ask him to clean out your heart and soul from the inside out. Because when we start on the inside out, the outside also becomes clean. But if we continue to try to clean up from the outside in, you will never fully be clean. Every time God wakes us up and he gives us another chance, he gives us another day, another opportunity, we, we have the, the choice to ask God to direct our hearts and to restore our soul. My encouragement for you today, church, is that when we're struggling with anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, lust, pain, or even childhood memories, that, that we would reflect on our hearts and our soul and not just push these areas into the closet but that we would cry out to God to cleanse our hearts and renew our souls that we would let the Holy Spirit remove these burdens that that we have stored in our closet and make us clean again from the inside out church we must remember when we clean from the inside out the outside will never be clean but when we clean from the outside or when we clean from the inside out, the outside will also become clean. I'm here today to tell someone that no matter what you have stored in your closet, no matter how full your closet might be, God can still clean out your closet. There, there's, no, there's not one closet in this place today that is too full for our God. We serve a God that is strong and relentless and has everything it takes to clean out your closet. If you look at 2 Samuel 11, I'm not going to, read the whole thing. I'm just going to paraphrase it, but it's the story of David and Bathsheba. And David, he, he had many sins stored in his closet. David had um, sinned when he had an affair with Bathsheba, and Bathsheba, she was a good-looking woman that David lusted after when he gazed from the rooftop of his palace at her bathing one night. And David liked what he seen, so he sent his messengers to go get Bathsheba and to bring Bathsheba to him. And she came and they ended up sleeping together. And eventually Bathsheba became pregnant with David's child. And Bathsheba's husband was a soldier in David's army. So David, he knew he had messed up by getting Bathsheba pregnant. So he tried to arrange it to where Uriah would, would go home every night to be with Bathsheba to make it seem like the kid was his. He, he told Uriah to go home and relax. And when Uriah left the palace, David even sent him a gift. But Uriah didn't go home. He, he slept that night at the palace entrance in the king's pal with the king's palace guard. And when Uriah didn't go home and David found out, David summoned for him to come to him. And he asked him, he said, why didn't you go home after being away for so long? And this is what Uriah replied back. He said, the ark and the armies of Israel and Judah are living in tents, and Joab and my master men are camping in the open field. 
how could I go home to wine and dine and sleep with my wife when I swore I would never do that? But since David couldn't make it look like the baby was Uriah's, he pretty much had Uriah killed. He told his general Joab to put Uriah on the front lines in battle and to position him in a certain way, knowing that he was going to be killed. And so once Uriah was killed in battle, Bathsheba, she grieved for a while, but later she married David. And their baby ended up passing away. See, at this point in David's life, it was not looking good for him. He was suffering from all of the sins that he had committed and was storing into his closet. David had a closet full of sin, but if you flip to Philippians, I mean, uh, sorry, Psalms 51, David prayed to God, asking God to clean his heart and to cleanse him from all of his sins that, that he had committed. And David received that clean heart from God. His sins were washed away, and David might have had a list of sins, but once he prayed to God, asking God to cleanse his heart, David was restored. David prospered as king and later had another son named Solomon who became a great leader of Israel. When we store things in our closet, it's hard for us to, to be clean and restored. But when we give everything over to God and we allow him to remove these areas from our life, then we can fully be clean and prosper in the areas of life that God is calling us to and has for us. What is stored in our closet will give the enemy leverage to defeat you. But God will clean out your closet and restore you. Can I say that again this morning, church? What is stored in the closet will give the enemy leverage to defeat you. But God will clean out your closet and restore you. See, what David had a lot of areas of his life and a lot of sin stored in the closet. But he began to pray and ask God for forgiveness and for God to cleanse his heart. And we serve a God that is powerful and so forgiving that he stepped in and cleaned out David's closet. But not only did he do that, he blessed David. David prospered as king, and later he had a son that became a great leader of Israel. If we are just willing to cry out to God, handing everything over to him, God is ready to step into your heart and your soul and remove what you have stored in the closet. There is someone here today that, that needs God to clean out their closet. Their closet is too full. The door is about to buckle. Nothing else can fit into their closet. I want to tell you to cry out to God. Begin to pray and ask God for a cleansed heart and a renewed soul. God is ready to remove the lust, the pain, the childhood memories, fear, regret, and anything else you have in your closet for good. He's ready to help you feel accomplished, to feel free, and to know what it looks like to shine. When we clean from the inside out, the outside also becomes clean. Once again, church, don't store it in the closet. Will you stand with me this morning? My prayer for you this morning is that we would lean on God's strength, God's understanding, that we would allow God to have leverage to our closet, that we would let God be in control of our closet and what comes in and out of our closets, that we would no longer let the enemy have leverage to defeat us or have leverage to open our doors and let things that shouldn't come out come out. I pray that God is the only one in control of your closet. Lord, we just thank you this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the, the things that you continue to do in our lives, the faithfulness. Lord, we ask that you would continue to pour into us and, and reach our hearts, Lord, that you would make our hearts clean and our souls restored. Lord, we read that story of David and how he, he sinned when he had an affair, but Lord, we know that, that you're so powerful that you still blessed him, that you still saved him. So Lord, we know that there's hearts in here this morning that are crying out to you, that need your love, need your guidance, and need you to clean out their closet, Lord. Lord, that you would clean out all the darkness and that you would shine a light 
into their closet. Lord, we thank you for today. We, we praise you. We give you all the honor and glory. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Here at Cornerstone. Here at Cornerstone Church, we believe in prayer. So if you want to spend some personal time in prayer, please feel free to come down to the altars. They're open. Remember, there will be no midweek service this week. And Cornerstone 21 Days of Prayer and Fasting begins next Sunday, January 2nd. Thank you so much for letting me speak to you. I hope that this spoke to somebody's heart this morning. The band's going to lead us in another song. Please feel free to worship with us or find you a place of prayer. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. God bless you this morning, Cornerstone. As the Spirit was moving over the water, the Spirit come move over us. Come rest on.